Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Stupid Player Negative AE, and welcome back to Quick Vagante Guides, a series in which I give you guys five tips that I found in my week of playing Vagante that might be able to help you in your game. Now, as always, if you find any of these tips helpful or even interesting, make sure you hit that like button. Not only do I really appreciate it, but it also helps others who may not know these tips find the video. This week's topic is going to be about advanced combat maneuvers. Now, if you've played the tutorial, you probably already know a little bit about combat, like how basic fights will work, and the distance you might want to be in order to not take damage. Now, while this is necessary to survive, you might be able to do just a little bit more in combat to avoid taking dumb damage, and there's nothing worse than losing a run to dumb damage. So here are my five tips to try and help you take less hits. Tip number one, use the slide. In Vigante, after you attack or cast a spell in your desired direction, the game gives you a split second to move a few frames. Instead of holding forward when you attack, try moving backward as the attack animation happens, and your character will slide a few steps, and you may avoid some unwanted damage. This may take a bit of practice though, because if you do it too soon, you can make the attack go the other way, so you gotta make sure you train a lot in the dark caves. Tip number two, don't stay on the ground. Enemies will try to swarm you from time to time, which could end up making you accidentally jump into spikes or back into a corner with no escape, taking tons of damage. So don't let that be. Bouncing on enemies to reposition or even boosting yourself to a higher place by jumping on their heads is a super good idea, and it prevents possible damage. And it might just save your life. Tip number three. Learn your character. Each character in Vigante has its own unique playstyle that will alter the way you fight and play. I'll go into each character in future guides, but for now here are the quick rundowns to get you started. Knight. You started with a little bit more reach than any other class, so make sure you stay as far back while dealing good damage from a distance. Rogue. Uh, you're given both range and melee for a reason, so if the level's claustrophobic, try to hit with the knife, and if the level opens up a bit more, uh, try to pick him off with the bow from a distance uh, as best you can. Mage. Learn how to dance. You should be jumping over and around enemies to avoid attacks way more than normal. Casting spells at a far enough distance so that you can finish the cast animation before getting hit is a major part of playing mage early game. Wildly. Hit and run for your life. <laughs> this guy hits like a truck past uh, early to mid game, so be very careful early on and be on the lookout for any fist weapons along the way. Tip number four. Be creative with your level one abilities. Most of the class specific affinities can help you in combat level 1. So while the knight's holy path level 1 is take no falling damage, it may not seem totally helpful in combat, remember that some enemies still do take that falling damage. Jump from a high edge and watch as enemies plummet down in a desperate attempt to follow. You can also use the wildling's animal path to roar and push enemies around into spikes and boulder traps in the area. Experiment with your favorite path. Tip number five, location, location, location. A lot of the time fighting an enemy where they spawn isn't the best idea. Run away, assess the level, and find a place that you've explored that may force the baddies into a dangerous situation or maybe even get you some free damage. Sometimes just the location can make the fights go so much faster and can help you take a lot less damage in the long run. Now before we end today's guide, in last week's episode about shopkeepers I asked if you guys had any tips of your own and you guys came up with some pretty interesting stuff. So here are all the tips that you guys found about shopkeepers in the last episode. What you may not have known is the shopkeeper is a big portal fan. So if he sees a portal anywhere, he'll stop what he's doing and immediately go through it. This could be used for some tricky situations where you could make him fall into spikes or uh, place the portal in a dangerous situation for the shopkeeper so that way you can steal all of his items. Finding the regen and poison potion is really helpful in Vigante, and sometimes you don't have enough identify scrolls to make sure it happens. So, if you want, you can use the shopkeeper as a personal identify guy. Uh, if you want to pay the price, you can identify poison and regen for you if it's in the shop. And that's it. Let me know whether or not these tips were helpful to you guys, and if you guys have any tips of your own or want me to cover a topic that you have trouble with, let me know in the comments and it might show up in next week's guide. Thank you guys for watching and most of all being there for me. This has been Tuba Player Negative AE and don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you feel necessary, and I hope you guys are having a good rest of your day. Peace out guys.